Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use GeoGebra Classic to create a random practice problem. I'm going to do, for a particular example, factoring a quadratic, solving a quadratic equation by factoring. Um, but the key features, I'm going to have two buttons, one that will generate new values to create a new problem, and then one that controls the step-by-step -step feedback. Okay. So this is an approach that I've used to create all kinds of problems you can find on my webpage, and I think the factoring is a pretty good example to show you how it can be done. And the more you know about GeoGebra, the more you can do, but just with the two simple buttons, you can create a lot of problems like this. Okay. So I'm going to build this one to have integer solutions and kind of you know work backwards over here in the what we call the algebra view over here. Um, first of all, I'm going to turn off when you open up GeoGebra, you get the algebra view and the graphics view. I'm going to turn the axis off. I'm going to right click here, show axis, because I just want a clean slate for writing my problem over here. Um, what I want to do, I'm going to create the answers first. Then I'm going to call them M and N for my two answers. And I want those to be numbers. And of course, you, you could use whatever values you want, but I want those to be integers from negative 10 to 10, excluding 0, because if it was 0, you could factor it by a simpler method. But, um, so what I'm going to do is create the lists first. I'm going to let L1... So there's different ways you could do this, but I'm going to let L1 be a sequence. Use the command sequence, and you see on GeoGebra when you start typing in a command, you get all these options and the different types of arguments. I'm going to do a sequence here from negative 10 to 10 by 1. If I use that to pick my random elements, that could possibly include 0, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm going to make another list, L2, and GeoGebra has the command remove which is a nice quick way to come up with a list and throw out a few elements. So I'm going to remove from the list, L1, the list. I have to use the set brackets, the, the curly brackets here. And you can remove from one list any other list that you want, so a subset here, and I'm just going to remove zero, so the set containing zero. So now L2 is the list. I'm going to pick my, my random M and N values from here, negative 10 to 10, excluding 0. So that's, that's one way to quickly create the list to, to pick from. And you could do that all in one big command, but I'm going to do it that way. Um, okay, so next, let's go ahead and pick our values here. I'm going to let M equal random element. And you see there's a lot of different ways to get random things here in GeoGebra. Random between is a nice one. If I wasn't throwing out 0, I would just do random between negative 10 and 10. But but I'm going to do random element from my list here. So from L2, my list that doesn't include 0. And then I'm going to let in, I'm going to do the same command, random element from the list L2. Okay. So those are going to wind up eventually being my two answer values here. And I'm going to create a button that will... I'm going to use the command update construction that will pick new random values anytime that I want to. Okay, so we've got those. Now I'm going to build the functions. I'm going to go ahead and build, I'm going to call it f1 of x, which will be the function. And it's just going to be x minus m. I'm going to do x minus m and x minus n. I'm going to go ahead and use the command simplify just to make sure I don't wind up maybe with like minus a minus. If I do simplify, it'll make sure it does simple simplification like that. like turns two negatives into a plus and so forth. So I'm going to do x minus m. Okay, So we get x minus 2 there. And you see when you do a function, it graphs it. I'm going to click the little circle to turn that off. And then I'm going to do f2 of x equals same thing but with n. Simplify. Let's see. Simplify x minus m. Again, it graphs it. I'm going to turn it off. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead, I guess, and build the function where I multiply those together. I could multiply that out symbolically, but I'm just going to use GeoGebra's built-in command. I'm going to do f of x equals, and I'm going to use the command expand, f1 times f2. Um, it'll do the of x for you if you just type f1 of f2. It'll change it there to f1 of x times f2 of x. Okay, so there's the thing we're going to factor. And of course, ultimately, when we set that equal to zero, our answers will be m and n, the way I'm going to set it up here. So again, that's a graph. I'm going to turn it off. I don't want to see that. Um, so we're almost there. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and define b to be m plus n and c to be m times n. Okay. I'm going to use those in some of my, my feedback over here. Okay, so I think we're ready to build it now. I'm going to start building the input, and then we'll do the buttons. So I'm going to go up here to the input-output commands under, it looks like a slider at the top there, and then you get the other options, and I'm going to select text and click somewhere over here. 
And you can use LaTeX. I usually do, but for this video, I don't want to go into detail about how to actually do LaTeX. Although I will show you if you click on the Advanced tab, you can get LaTeX formulas, which will show you if you don't know how to write the scripts. That's a nice way to get the little templates set up. But I'm just going to use standard text here. Okay, so let me start over. So I'm just going to click here, and I'm going to say solve by factoring. So whatever instructions you want to use for your problem here. Let's say solve by factoring. And then if you want to use something you've created in the algebra view, click the advanced tab and then click on, that's the little GeoGebra logo there, the little, little graph picture. Click on that and you can select any objects that you've created. So I can click on F there and let me click on preview. You'll see it's going to use the value for F. So I want to solve that equals zero. So there's my problem. Let's go ahead and make the button that'll make it random. I'm going to click here and get the button and click over here beside it somewhere and the caption, what it's going to say on the button. I'm going to say new function, say new values, something like that. Sometimes I make one that says reset, but let's call this one new function. And then the buttons, when you click on them, they execute what's called GeoGebra script. And again, that can get pretty advanced, but all you need to know here is there's a command called update construction. And what that will do when I click it, it'll recall the random commands and give me new values. So update construction, make sure I spelled it right there. And it has empty arguments, get the parentheses, and you end the commands with a semicolon. So when I click the button, it's going to update construction if I do that. So let's see if it works. Yeah, so I click it, I get new values for M and N, which will generate my new, my new equation. So now let's give feedback. So I'm going to click on the text, and of course when you write the feedback there, you would decide exactly what you want to see. say. Do that in your own, your own voice, your own words. But I'm going to say, find values of, and I'm going to use M and N, find values of M and N such that, let's see, we would want M times N to equal what I called C. So there's why I defined C over there to be M times N. And let's see, we want M plus N to equal, it's actually negative B the way I've done it. And you can click on, when you do these objects, it creates this, this box. When you click on it, you're actually getting basically the same input box you would have in GeoGebra. You can do all sorts of math computations. I'm just going to do negative B here. Okay. So if we look at our problem to check that out, we'd want to find two values. You know, I'm going to call them M and N, that when I multiply them, I get the constant 18. And then when I add them, I get negative 9 there is the coefficient on X. Um, and then, so the student would have to think through those. And then the next, you'd find those. Um, so we'll say we want M equals M and N equals N. Okay, and I'm going to make another button in a minute that controls that you see these in sequence as you click on the button. Okay, so solve by factoring. Uh, another thing I just thought of, you, you want to right click on these, you have some options. Lock object controls it so that you can't move it around. You might want to do that. Um, but you probably definitely want to pin to screen. If you don't, let me show you. I'm, my, I'm on a PC. My center mouse button, when I scroll it, it zooms in and out. If I turn the access back on, because that's how you zoom in and out. This stuff is fixed at certain coordinates and it'll actually move if you do that. But if I pin to screen, that won't happen. Okay, So I, I recommend you do pin to screen. You can lock them if you want, but definitely I recommend pin to screen. So let me turn the axis back off. There we go. Okay, so let's see. We found our two values and then so we would do the factoring. So let me add another text box. Say something like so or therefore or something. Let's say so. I'm going to say f is equal to and do the factors. So I'll put parentheses for my factors and then go in and do f1 and f2, which is my x minus m, x minus n. Can you can see the preview there? I guess I'm going to put a period on the end. Okay, so there we go. Let's see, and then we'd set each factor equal to zero and solve. So let's tell them that. Set each factor equal to zero and solve for x. And I think I'm going to do that in one step now. So, so my factors are f1 and f2. So we've got f1 equals zero, 
I'm just going to do with a comma here, f2 equals 0, and then on the next line that would give me x equals m, comma, x equals n. And there we go. Okay. I'm going to make one more button here in a second, but I can click, 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 get new problems. Okay. The way I'm going to control how they would see this feedback, I'm going to create a new value over here. I'm going to call it s equals. S is going to be my counter that it's going to start at zero when I have a new problem and then count up. Um, anytime you define a new value like that, if I define it to be zero, it's going to make it be between negative five and five. It, it create, let me show you. If I do s equals zero, which is the first value I'd want, it, it creates a slider between negative five and five. That may be enough steps. I think it is here on this problem, but you may need more steps. You can click on the three dots and go to the settings, click on the slider tab, and you can change the uh, the min and the max values. Okay? That's a little annoying sometimes to have to do that over and over when you know you need a lot of steps. So I usually, since I'm going to reset it anyway, let me delete that. I'm going to start with s equals 20, which is more steps than I'm probably ever going to need. But then I'm going to go to my new function button and add one more command to the script. So I'm going to right click, go to settings, and under scripting, drop down here to the second line and use the command set value s to zero. So yeah, there's lots of different things you can do with GeoGebra script, but two that if you know these two, you can do a lot of these types of problems. You got update construction, that way every time I click the button it'll recall my random values. And then set value is how you can change the value of a particular variable. I'm going to set the value of s, in this case to zero, every time I click to get a new problem. Okay. So we've got that. And now I'm going to create another button that does my counter, so I'm going to write on it next step. So when I click this button, you get the next step. And I'm going to do set value s to s plus 1. So every time you click it, it adds 1 to s. So that's how I'll count through and know what step I'm on. Okay, and then I just have one more thing to do. I'm going to get my pointer tool, my selector tool. And then for each of these, I'm going to right click on them, go to settings. And then under the advanced tab, it says condition to show object, and I'm going to use my counter. I'm going to do s greater than zero. So this won't show until I click the button once. Okay, So it's going to disappear. And then I'm going to go down the line here, s greater than one, s greater than two, s greater than three, s greater than four. So this time, I wouldn't need s to be any bigger than five. It would have worked, but you got to be careful there. If you have a lot of steps and you forget to reset this, and S can't be bigger than 5 as a slider. Even if you keep clicking, clicking the buttons, it would never get any bigger and you wouldn't see the extra commands. But anyway, that's how I control what shows. Um, and now it's, it's done, basically. Okay, you can get new problems, click Next Step, and you'll see step by step. Find the m and n values such that m times n is negative 24 in this case, m plus n is 5. So the two values that would do that would be negative 8 and 3. So we can factor this into x plus 8 times x minus 3. Set each factor equal to zero and solve for x, and you have your solutions. And then, of course, you would go over here to the three bars, click, and go to View, and turn off the Algebra View. That way, if a student were doing this, they wouldn't see any of the Algebra View. And you can save these. I recommend, if you use GeoGebra, get yourself a GeoGebra account, an online free account at the GeoGebra webpage. They used to call it GeoGebra Tube. I'm not sure if they call it that anymore, but you can get a GeoGebra account. And you go and you can save the, if you go to file and save, it actually saves online. That's in the newest versions. That's the only way you can save directly with that command is online. But if you go to download as, you can download as a .gg, .ggb file, which is basically how you save it to your local computer. But if you have an account, you just go to share. I have one, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on this. And let's call this solving a quadratic by factoring. Solving a quadratic equation by factoring. So give it some sort of name. And you can either make it private or it would save it onto their page, but only you could access it. Or if you leave it shared, you can share it by link. And I click save and it'll generate the link for me and I can just copy and paste that link and give it to people. Okay. So that's it. That's how you could create a nice random problem. A student can come in and you know click and get lots of different problems work through it theirself, and then go through step by step and check their work is the idea here. Okay. So thank you very much.